do me. Bible study on tonight as we prepare to go deeper into the word of a living God, to learn, to grow, to be informed. I want to pick up somewhat from where we left off last week and we were looking at, uh, we were online, but we were looking at the being able to position ourselves in these times. So that our faith can work. We looked at a verse in Corinthians and we looked at several verses. We looked at Peter and we were talking about how important it is to examine ourselves at this point to see whether or not we are in the faith. We talked about how important our faith is in, this, in these particular times. Because the Bible says if we're going to please God, we're going to have to please him by what? By faith. By faith, the Bible says, they obtain a more excellent report. It matters not only the report we believe, but the report we create in this season. And if anything in life can come to try your faith, it's, it's um, hard times or challenging times. And so with that tonight, I want to pick up back in 1 Peter, 2 Peter, And I want us to make sure that we are where we need to be in the faith. Again, because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And all of us want to please God. The Bible says he's given each of us the measure of faith. And what is that measure for? Actually, 1 Peter, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 1. What is that measure of faith for? It's so we can believe first and foremost that he's God. One of the issues of our times is what do we believe? Who do we believe? Many voices in the land. Many saying this, many saying that. But the reality is who's lining up with the word of God? The Bible said that we're not to be tossed to and fro. How? With every wind of doctrine. Amen? We're to be solid. So going to 1 Peter tonight, looking at verse 6. 1 Peter 1, verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. That the proof of your faith, the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable. Even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor. Look at this now. 
had the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now I want to pull a couple things out. Number one, this is a trial. Your faith goes on trial. Well, Apostle, what does that mean? The, man, the Bible says every time you hear the word, you get tested for that word. Somebody shoot on that one. <laughs> every time you hear the word, every time a prophetic word is given to you. Mm. Okay, okay. Go to Psalms. Let me find it right quick. Go to Psalms. I want to show you this. Now, you said, my God. Yeah, that's a whole lot of testing going on there, isn't it? But how many you know, God wants to prove himself to you. That's what the scripture just said. The proof of your faith. It's important that you and I know that God means what he says. And that he says what he means. He's not trying to hide himself from us. You gotta understand that this is a fight. It's a warfare for your faith. The Bible says until Joseph's word came, the, the, uh, Joseph, um, hear you. Psalms 105, 105. I got a lot of scripture written in my head. Psalms 105. Psalms 105, and let's pick it up in verse 15. If I can get me a reader tonight, come on, I need your voice on things, so if you're going to read, whoever's going to, whoever read, put that microphone to them so we can capture them. So somebody read Psalms 105 and pick it up in verse 15. Psalms 105. Do not touch my anointed one or harm my prophets. He called down famine against the land and destroyed the entire food supply. He had sent a man ahead of him, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with shackles. His neck was put in an iron collar. Mm. Until the time his prediction came true, the word of the Lord tested him. Wow. Did you see that? Now, did you also reference a couple of points? His neck. What are we dealing with in this George Floyd situation? What are we dealing with with the family? What causes sometimes? The Bible says, you touch my anointing. Read your word, y'all. There's a word at play even now in this season. Yeah, it's in the book. The Bible said, touch not my anointing, do my prophets no harm. And that's what God said, I sent a word for you to direct you. I sent a word to steer you to a course. But until the time of maturation of that word, there's going to be some testing going on. Watch this now. We know the story of Joseph. We know he had a dream. He tried to share the dream with his family. He tried to tell them what God was going to do. But isn't it amazing? The minute God gave him a dream, hell broke loose. The minute God gave him a word, his family came against him. He gets sold out by his family. He gets sold from the pit, bought, taken into slavery. Next thing you know, he's in prison. Next thing you know, he's in the past. See, a lot of times we think when a word comes, oh, it's just good. No, when a word comes, a process comes. See, this might help some folks that want to run around and get a word. Okay, <laughs> when you get a word, you got to be prepared to fight for that word. So look at 19 again. Until the time that his word came to pass. Oh, I'm going to help you tonight. While I'm going through what I'm going through, your word ain't ready to come yet. You heard it, but it ain't the season of it. 
So what do I do while I'm waiting on a word to manifest? I maintain my faith. I continue to hold on. See, the Bible talks about it, Timothy. When Paul encourages Timothy, he said, listen, you got a war, a good warfare. Using the word that was given to you. Now, we go back to Mark 11, and what do we see? The Bible says what? That when the word walked for me, that when the word came, so did the enemy. Are you hearing me? When your word comes, there's an enemy that comes. The Bible talks about the different grounds. But what ground did the word fall on? You got to know you good ground. You got to know that your soil or your heart is rich. Why? Because that word ain't just automatically coming to pass. What's going to happen? Trial is going to come. The word, watch this here. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. How bad do you want me? Do you really believe I can do what I said I would do? Oh, we jump and shout when that word comes. God gonna give you this. God gonna give you that. But the next day, if not the next hour, hell break loose. Why? He's coming to rob to steal, to get that word out of you so that it won't produce. But if Joseph had to go through it, are you exempt? If Jesus had to go through it and he was the Messiah, are you exempt? All right, so let's go back to Peter. So now maybe this will this one make a little more sense. What am I dealing with in this season? Oh, but the good news, now we got the Holy Ghost. He's going to help us. Because watch this. I'm going to tie it in. The Bible said he's going to bring to remembrance everything that the Lord told you. So my fight while I'm waiting on God it's a fight to keep my faith. What did Paul say? I fought a good fight. I kept, I kept what? I kept the faith. So in essence, in the fight, what I always found the enemy reaching at was what I heard. Huh? What did you hear later? What word came to you lately? What did you study? What did you hear prophetically? What came in a session like this? Because the enemy said, I don't want you to grow. I can't let you grow. Because if I do, I won't be able to control you. The Bible says, newborn babes decide to send sealed milk of the word that you may what? Grow thereby. The Bible even said of Jesus, he waxed strong in the spirit. And that's the more he opened the book, the Bible said he found himself. And in finding himself, he became who he was ordained to be. That's why the enemy don't want you to read. That's why he don't want you to come to church. That's why he creates scenarios around the time that you're to get in the Word. That's why he sends distractions across your path or in your life. Why? Because he don't want you to grow. Because if you ever grow up in God, he won't be able to touch you. If you ever grow up in the knowledge of who you are in Christ, you're somebody to deal with. So it says again in 1 Peter 1 and verse 6, And this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a season, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. You think you're over one thing and here goes something else. You get this situation handled and something else pop up. That the proof of your faith. Now why is that important? Because Hebrews 11 and 1 said, my faith is the substance of the thing I'm hoping for. Faith is my substance. So what you understand, the enemy is attacking your substance. Why? 
because he don't want you to get the evidence. Hmm. He don't want you to get the evidence. So that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold. Look at this. It's more precious than gold. Now, remember Sunday? Silver and gold have I no. But what I do have is faith. Hmm. What will my faith do? My faith will help you get up from your situation. My faith will help you turn around where you are. My faith will get you back on course to live and do the thing God has called you to do. Now watch this here. Let the proof of your faith be more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise. Listen, listen. What's the end result of what the enemy did to you or what the enemy is doing to you? At the end of this, you ought to be praising God. Come on, y'all. Come on. If the attack of the enemy don't bring a praise out of you, you ain't been tested. If what the enemy is bringing to your door does not produce a praise, you ain't truly been tested. That was the devil that came. Somebody might have tested you, but it wasn't the adversary. God said, when you truly been tested by the adversary and you survive and you come through the fire, there's going to be praise and glory and honor. Why? Watch this. Come on now. I'm going to help y'all now. Why? Because I got a revelation of Jesus through all of this. <laughs> Woo! Y'all better read y'all Bible. Huh? Man, I went through this, but at the end of this, guess who I saw? Guess who ultimately became bigger than the circumstance I was in? Jesus. I've been dealing with this lady God, lately. God gave it to me as a revelation. Talks about how everything works together for the good. Well, for it to be good, those O's got to be obedience and opposition. Now watch this here. On a battery, you got a positive, but you also got a negative. That's what produces the power. But look at this. If I can see beyond the opposition, drop one of them holes. Don't let my focus be on what the enemy is doing, but what is God doing? Because if I can see God, I can survive it. Looking unto, watch this, come on y'all, I'm in the book. Looking unto Jesus, who is what? The author and the finisher of my faith. Man, this thing happened so I can get what I'm believing for. This thing has occurred so I can grow up in God. Huh? It ain't for me to have a pity party. It ain't for me to faint. The Bible said if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So y'all didn't catch that. Adversity is designed to grow you up. Okay, we just got through talking about Joseph. Joseph went to the pit. He went to the prison. But he wound up in the palace. He was destined for the palace by virtue of the dream. But on the road to the palace, there was a pit. He was thrown into the pit. He didn't fall. He was thrown. Y'all didn't catch that. When he came to the prison, he was lied on. But he didn't lose his faith. See, if you keep pressing, and if you keep pushing, it's just like, we, okay, the acronym for push. Pray until something happens. Do you not think tonight that your praying ain't making some stuff happen? 
Now you might look at it and say that, what I, that ain't what I thought was going to happen But what do you expect God to do But to rescue you But to save you But to deliver you The problem is We want to tell God how to do it We want to tell God Who he can use to do it God said, I know what's best because I see it ahead of you. Come on, come on. He's Alpha, but he's also Omega. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? He's the author. He's the finisher. We say we trust God, but we won't allow God to finish what he started. making sense to you tonight. So the trial of my faith, even being tested by fire, has got to produce a praise, a glory, and an honor. And it's going to bring forth out of me a revelation. Look at verse 8. And though you have not seen him, you love him. If what you're going through don't make you love God more, They used to sing a song, Falling in Love with Jesus was the best thing that ever happened to me. Huh? Though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe, but believe in him. You greatly rejoice with joy, inexpressible, and what? Full of glory. You following me? Now look at verse 9. Here's our key verse, one of the key verses. So out of all of this, what's going to happen? Verse 9. Obtaining as the outcome of your faith. Look at this. The salvation of your soul. Did y'all did you catch all that? Man, if I just hold on to the word and just go through, keep plowing, the Bible said I'm gonna get the outcome I first started to believe for. Now it's a difference from where I started to where I am now. Come on y'all. Come on y'all. Huh? There's a difference. Because everybody that started with me might not be with me when I eat. My viewpoint when I started may not even be the same viewpoint when it's over. Some of my desires when I started, I may get here now and say, you know what? That don't even mean that much to me. We've been in this pandemic and you've been finding out what really means a lot. Come on now. Huh? You'll be surprised at what God has cut away from your life through this pandemic. No restaurants. No activities. Even trying to cut God out. Only the strong survives. Huh? Got to be in the house every day at 7 o'clock. Go to work and get off at 5 be home by 7. Come on, y'all. You found out what was really important. You found out that your entertaining, entertainment didn't mean as much as living. You wearing masks now. Because you want to be healed and whole. You don't want to catch nothing. You did things you hadn't done before. And most were done out of a survival instinct. Because you want to live. Come on, y'all. The way I start may not be the way I end. But I got to keep pressing. My faith is on trial. Test the coming. But I seek to win. I seek. I seek to win. 
No glory to God. Come on, let me take you to a few. Go to James. Go to James. First chapter. Look what it says. You know it. Somebody read James 1. Give me 2, 3, 4. So we talked about this last week. I got to examine myself. And I got to see if I'm in the faith. I'm waiting on reward. Huh? I'm looking for a glorious outcome. What does 1 and, and 2 say? Start at verse 2. Whoever got the mic. Book of James. Okay, wait one second, lady. Put that, put that mic on you so we can be clear to the audience. Go ahead. Yeah, I got to pray in the Holy Ghost. But now I got to maintain an attitude of gratitude. Huh? It may feel like this is killing me, but reality says it's saving me. Ooh. So count it all joy. Let patience have its perfect work. And then look at five. We'll go right there for a minute. Look at five. What does five say? If you don't know what to do in a time like this, ask God. Ask God. Well, if I read my Bible correctly, he's going to tell you the same thing he told Peter. Peter, I'm praying that your faith fail not. It's a test time. Pass the test. Huh? It's a test. You know how the thing come on the TV and beep out and block out your pitch and make noise? It's a test. Do you have the will to win? Do you have the will to win in this season? Because if you have the will to win, you're pressing. Y'all missed that. You're pressing. You'll push like you've never pushed before. You'll pray until something happens. And then watch this. When stuff starts happening, you won't be afraid. God, have your way. This is what I've been praying. I've been praying that you make my path plain. I've been praying that you would give me an answer. But you can't despise the answer when it comes. Glory to God. You got to learn how to thank God. Look at verse 12. Somebody read verse 12. Man ain't gonna prove it is. Cause if many 
time, man is the one being used to come against you. But blessed, look at that word, blessed is a man or woman who perseveres under trial. For once you've been approved, you're going to receive, now look at this, the crown of life. See, and Peter, I went to the end of your faith. James, you're lacking nothing. Now, the Bible says you're going to get crowned with life. You shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who what? Love it. So what was all of this about? It was a test of my love for God. It was a test of my love for the word of God. It was a test to see would I let God be first and final authority in my life. It was a test to see whether I really wanted God to author and finish. Because let me you know, it's the author that changes the chapters. Sometimes God changes chapters in our life. Sometimes he put a period in a place and said, that's enough. Let's begin anew. Let's begin afresh. Do you trust him that much? Say, God, write my story. God, write my story. Who shall I? All right, let me hear you. What time? Glory to God. Go to... Um, Go to Jude. Jude, right before Revelation. We've been talking about this book a lot lately. Coming out of Pentecost. We've been talking about it because the Bible says, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. How? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Why? So you can keep yourself in the love of God. See how that verse just goes right back and connect with everything we just said? I know that this is a test and my love is under fire. My love for God, my love for the word of God, my love for the promises, the one that he's already told me is yes and amen. So if I'm gonna get it, the Bible says I'm gonna have to pray in the Holy Ghost, building myself up. Why? Because I received the Holy Ghost by faith. And if God is able to baptize me in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and every time I open my mouth, it just flows, I know God is present. Come on, y'all. And if God is that close, and if God can do that, He can do anything. In Jude, I want to start at the round verse 1. I'm going to read it for you. Look what it says in verse 3. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity, necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith. Do what? What does he want you to do? Continue. What does that word continue mean? Man, fight for what you believe. Don't just give it up at every obstacle, and every trial that presents itself to you. Don't give it up. Why not, Pastor? We get ready to be this more precious than God. To give up your faith is to give up your increase. How is gold made and gold determined through the fire? God said you're going to be able to purchase so much with your faith which you get through whatever it is you're going through. He said, contend earnestly for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. God said, I gave you faith to win. Just like I gave you the Holy Spirit to win. But the Holy Spirit and faith work together. The Bible said the Holy Spirit is going to bring back to your remembrance everything God said. 
in your trial, in your circumstance, in your situation, look to him for the Spirit of God. Many times he's going to say, peace. Peace to you. Many times he's going to say, rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. And you be sitting there saying, but God, do you not understand what just happened to me? Yeah, I know. Rejoice. Offer up the gift of thanksgiving. But God, they just took this, or, or I just lost that. He said, but in everything. In everything. Give thanks. You thinking you lost, God said, you just gave. I just brought you to the winner's circle. I just promoted you. I just took you to another level. Contend for the faith. Look at verse 4. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed. Those who were long beforehand marked out for condemnation. You see, you got to be careful when you're in a fight for your faith. Who's there? Because some people, listen, anybody that won't encourage you in the things of God, got to exit your life. Look what he said. I ain't looking at what the Bible said. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed. Some people enter your life just to disrupt your life. Some people enter your life sent by the enemy simply with one purpose and determination. I'm going to bring you down. Come on, y'all. The strongest man in the world lost his anointing to a woman. You know the story of Samson and Delilah. Delilah didn't want Samson. She wanted to know his strength. Her purpose was not to build him up. Her purpose was to tear him down. Be careful of those who, that's why the Bible said, you got to know them by the Spirit. The Bible says, try the spirit to see whether or not it be of God. The Bible talks about the wolf, but he's in sheep's clothing. You looking like me, you acting like me, but you ain't talking like I talk. I'm talking Jesus. You talking something else. I'm talking healing and whole, wholeness. You're talking death and destruction. Come on, y'all. See, we got all this word. We just don't put it together to understand why is this happening. So the Bible says that you and I must contend for the faith because certain persons are trying to creep in, get in your space, get in your atmosphere. Ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness and deny our master. They don't want you to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. They ain't about the things of God or the ways of God. They're wolves and sheep folk. I just got to get close enough to you to destroy you. I just got to get close enough to you to find out how you've been surviving. So I can launch a missile. So I can be so close you never see the knife when I, really, when I, when I stab you. Jesus. Is it making sense tonight? Is it, is it bringing understanding to you why you need the Holy Ghost? Pastor, why 
I need the Holy Ghost so? Because he's the spirit of truth. He'll unveil deception. He'll unveil manipulation. He'll show you that Jezebel spirit. He'll show you that spirit of the liar. Because you get people coming to your life who build you up and tear you down. Make you seem like you're worthless. Your life is worthless. That's what Belial does. It releases an unworthiness on you. Well, when we are seeing, we are unworthy. But when we come into Jesus. All right, last verse, and then I'm done. I'm done. Second Timothy 4, so we can be at a good time. Second Timothy 4. Second Timothy verse 4. I'll go ahead and read for second time. Second Timothy verse 4, looking at verse 5. But you be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of the evangelist, fulfill your ministry. See, another reason the enemy comes and brings sometimes people in your life, because he don't want you to do the work of the ministry. He don't want you to do the thing God is calling you to do. No matter what it is, intercession. Could be evangelism, could be preaching, teaching, whatever capacity you in. There's always a contention around your assignment. Did you hear what I just said? They've always got a contention with your assignment. Mm. Look what verse 6 says. For I'm ready being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. And Paul says, out of all I've been through, I kept the faith. Out of all I've been through, I still believe. Out of all I've lost, Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was bent by a state. Paul was left for dead. Out of all, out of all I've been through, my faith has not changed. When they received me, when they didn't receive me. When they believed in me, when they didn't believe in me. When I was favored and unfavored. See, right above that, he's telling them, man, you got to preach the word. You got to be instant in season and out season. There's going to be time folks like you, and then there's going to be time folks hate you. There's going to be time folks going to work with you and time you can't get them to do nothing. Everybody smiling. Well, there's some, some smiling faces. What they do? They tell a lot of lies. Everybody smiling in your face ain't for you. Everybody grinning in your midst ain't happy about what God is doing. Because one thing I found this out over the years, anytime you start growing in God, and y'all can be part of the road dog homing, but when you start outgrowing them, all of a sudden, we ain't homing no more. We ain't partners now. But we still come up out the same hood, the same neighborhood. We come out of the same school, we were part of this, a part of that. What changed? You changed. You got a relationship with God. You start studying the word. You started transforming your life. And they said, wait a minute, I don't want to do that. I want to still smoke. I want to still drink. I want to still run around. I ain't ready to give up. What you ready to give up? But the strangest thing is, you can't be happy with my new life. Oh, you holy now. You better than me now. You're a better person than me. No. I made a better decision. People will hate you for your decisions. That means the Bible said be fully persuaded. You got to know. I got to know that to go to the next level means I might lose you. To go to the next level, a sacrifice.
Christ has got to be made. Everybody can't go with you in your next season because they don't believe what you believe. They don't trust God like you trust God. They're not holding fast to the word like you are. The price of more of God is less of you and me. The price of more of him is less of you and less of me. But if I didn't sacrifice then, I wouldn't be here now. So yeah, they doing what they do. I can't do that. That's not me now. That's not my goal. But a lot of them gone. They dead. Or they got other issues on that hand. There's a cost to go up in God. But the price of going higher is to become lighter. Less weight. More weight pulls you down. Less weight lifts you. That's why the Bible says, cast your cares on. Come on, y'all. The Bible talks about in Hebrews what he said. Discarding all weight and care. So I can go higher, so you can go higher. But in the process, keep the faith. Paul said, this is what I fought for. I fought for what I believe. It says, in the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Apostle, what is his appearing? That's that revelation. If you love how he showed up and it brought out a joy and a praise when you were going through, when you were in a situation, a circumstance, man, you're going to really shout at his appearing. When you see the one that did it all for you, the one that sacrificed his life, the one that said, you matter to me. Oh, they got all kinds of lives and matter out here now. But Jesus is saying, you matter. Because guess what I did? I died so you could live. I became poor so you could become rich. I took on sickness and disease so you could be made whole. I became poor just so you could be made Look what the Lord has done. Now, are you willing to mount on the wings of an eagle? Run and not be weak. Walk and not be Old folks used to sing and say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Stay in the ship. Stay in the ark. Keep trusting God. Your faith is producing. Your faith is manifesting. God, we give you the glory. Just lift our hands, if you will. Just worship God for a few minutes. Your faith matters. Your hope in God matters. He had brought you this far, taking you through all you've already come to lead you. Key is, don't you lead him? God, I'm holding on. God, I'm 
trusting every word you say. You're not a man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you would repent. God, everything you promised me, you're going to do. And you're going to do it in my season. You're going to do it in my time, God. And God, I'm not going to have to exit without fulfillment. But I'm going to do everything. Be everything. Have everything. You promised me. And when it's all said and done, there will be glory after this. There will be a praise, God. You won't have to look for a praise. Here I am. You won't have to look for a worshiper. Here I am. You won't have to look for an intercessor. Because I know what you did for me, you want to do for somebody else. God, I'll help pray somebody else through. I'll help pray somebody else out of this. I'll help be the difference in somebody else's life. Glory to God. I'll give you glory, God. I'll give you honor, God. I'll magnify your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.